Okay, we are in section 15.5, uh, speaker harmonics. So we go back to the original problem of solving partial differential equation of this form. So second order partial differential equation with a Laplacian and then a function that depends only on the radial coordinate. So we use the spherical coordinate and write down the Laplacian uh, explicitly. Actually, it has to be a f squared f r term. Okay, so this f, if it is zero, then you get back the Laplace equation. If f is a constant like a k square, you get the Helmholtz equation. So, and um, in the partial differential equation chapter, we use the separation of variable method to solve it. Then uh, we can write psi as a function of all theta and phi. So you have three functions, all, all, theta. So theta is, uh, I think, uh, theta, uh, theta, and then phi, phi. OK, so we use that kind of uh, form of solution or a summation of solution of this form because this is a linear equation. Okay, so uh, and then after we substitute into here, we found the equation for r, theta, and phi. This three function, and we already discussed that uh, if we are considering a problem that includes the whole range of phi, so basically going around the removal angle going around zero to two pi. Then this function phi is solved by trigonometric function, either sine theta, cosine theta, or power of sine theta, cosine theta. Or if we write in complex form, so ex exponential function i m phi for integer m, or plus or minus, including both positive and negative integer. OK, so. Uh, this is because of the going around theta from zero, a uh, phi from zero to two pi. Then you must satisfy the fact that this is a single value function, so you must have integer m. So we solve that after you substitute this into the theta function or the phi function. So basically, this term you basically pull out a negative m squared in, in front and. Combining with the theta function, you see that that equation is of the form of associated legenda equation. And then again, if now solving a three-dimensional problem that includes the whole range of theta, uh, theta from zero to pi, then the solution for the that equation is the associated legenda function. So, uh, and the all the properties of this um, uh, associated agenda function, we discussed that uh, in the last section. So uh, if we combine them, uh, we get the theta and phi part out. And usually we do that because uh, last term we mentioned that uh, so PLM and PL minus M, they're not linearly independent, actually they proportion to each other. But then the plus i m phi and minus i m phi function of the phi uh, part of the solution is orthogonal, they are linearly independent. So we usually combine these two and define what we call the spherical harmonics. And in defining that, we actually uh, requiring a certain normalization constant that is easier than the normalization in uh, the associated agenda function. So basically this one we combine the two and write it like R and R and then Y L M in the notation of the textbook that depends on both theta and phi. Okay. And so they, these are basically this the 
associated general function times the exponential function. So, but then uh, we have a certain the normalization in front. So, and if we write it down now, the uh, equation for both R and and phi and and y l m, we get the two equation for um, for theta for the R and R function and y function. So the two functions are so in your textbook eleven point one forty and one forty one. So you will use that and put it back to here. So the R equation is R double pi plus two R R pi plus F R minus L times L plus one R plus the zero. And then the YLM satisfied the theta and phi part. So we have a sine theta d d theta sine theta d d theta plus another sine square theta d square d phi square plus L times L plus one. Operate on Y L M. That equals to zero. Okay. All right. So this is uh, the equation satisfied by Y L M, which is exactly what we said. That's uh, the fate for phi part is this one. The theta part is the associated gender function. Okay. And then uh, the normalization. Is such that uh, the YLM, the orthogonal condition, becomes uh, simple. They are actually the orthonormal of the orthonormal form, and so the the orthonormal form is uh, defined in here. So you integrate so the phi part because phi is going around, so it's zero to two pi, and theta is from zero to pi. And then multiply by sine theta and y l m. Yeah, in your textbook, l one l one theta phi and complex conjugate times y l m l two m two theta phi. Okay, that equals to just the conical delta L1, L2, conical delta L1, L2. Okay, so um, now after you multiply the two, so all the m actually are orthogonal, although these twos are not. Uh, Independent, but uh, combining them, they become so of of a normal. So this uh, quantical delta is by integrating phi over this trigonometric function, and the this uh, quantical delta is by the uh, of of a of this uh, associated gender function that we last time talked about, and to make sure this is that, so the Definition of Y L M uh, take the form like this. So, so Y L M theta phi would take two L plus one four pi L minus M factorial plus M factorial. P L M cosine theta e to the I M phi. Okay, so this is the definition, and we recognize that uh, part of this uh, is the norm normalization constant of P L M, and that there's a two pi factor from the normalization constant in the uh, 
exponential function. So combined will be this is the normalization constant. Okay, so you define y l m the spiel harmonic like this, then this will be satisfied. Okay, so uh, so working with the spiel harmonics, so it's easier because you don't need to remember the normalization constant in front. And once you have that, the, you can do a, lots of things like uh, expanding a function into a series of involving spiritual harmonics, and that is called uh, that is called uh, uh, Laplace expansion. Okay, so um, so because of that, you can write say any function uh, f that in theta in phi can be written in sum of all possible L from 0 to infinity and all possible M goes to minus L to L and remember this is the restriction for the associated legenda function so M must be le less or equals to L okay so and then the coefficient is CLM times YLM Okay, so that uh, is the expansion, so-called Laplace expansion. So, so quite uh, obviously, then it means that uh, this coefficient can be obtained by just substitute substitute uh, this into or, or multiply this with a YLM. Uh, complex conjugate and integrate over this range of uh, angles. So this means uh, this all these coefficients C L M is just given by just doing the integration phi from zero to two pi theta from zero to pi multiplied by sine theta and then f theta this f theta phi with a complex conjugate L M theta phi. Okay, and that is quite obvious because uh, if you just substitute substitute this into uh, into here and use this. Uh, and use this of orthogonal uh, condition, of a normal condition, then you will pick up only the correct LM terms. Okay, so yeah. So uh, so yeah, actually, you should put this into uh, put this into here. Actually, put this into here. Okay, and then. The integration with the correct uh, the terms will pick up just just uh, one terms, okay, and then uh, you will get give you back the original uh, original the the CLM constant out. So this is coming from here, and there's a corresponding. Co uh, Completeness condition that's why we talk about something similar for the uh, agenda polynomial and when we talk about agenda series so uh, you can do it uh, in when you're going back to here you can see that uh, if you have sum over all the L uh, from 0 to infinity and summing over all the M from minus L to L so you have two of them, so you have uh, like y l m y l m theta and phi and y l m theta pi phi pi and that will give you a delta function because uh, you you sum over all these and put it back into the, the uh, to the integration. You you in the integration over here, then 
the substitutes in the back into here, summing over all this, supposedly will give you a delta function in theta and phi so delta function cosine theta minus cosine theta pi delta phi minus phi pi. Okay, so this is the corresponding completeness condition for the spherical harmonics. Okay, and once you have that, uh, just uh, you can do just ordinary uh, uh, calculation of all different problems. So you have uh, uh, a few examples in in uh, in fifteen point five point three. Okay, and um, then um, there will be other properties of the uh, spherical harmonics listed in the next topic also. Okay, uh, so we we'll stop here.